Millions of years ago, giant scarabs lived on our planet, and in honor of them, our ancestors created huge statues. A little later, just a few tens of millions of years, there were strange creatures on Earth called Nexaurus, which scientists still cannot figure out. More recently, an archaeologist from Israel found the house of Jesus Christ himself. All these findings are united by the interesting science of archaeology. Hi friend, you are on the Kurtop channel. British archaeologists found the home of Jesus Christ. An archaeologist from the University of Reading, Professor Ken Dark, has been conducting research on the excavation site in Nazareth for almost 15 years, where, according to legend, Jesus Christ was born. The scientist believes that the ruins found in the 1880s with a high probability may be the place where Joseph, Mary, and baby Jesus lived, and he gives evidence. The stone wall dwelling was carved into a limestone hill and had several adjoining rooms. One doorway has been preserved. There are two tombs on either side of the house. In 2015, Professor Ken Dark published an article based on initial findings from the excavation site and suggested that this was the home of Mary and Joseph. Subsequent analyses confirmed that the house dates from the 1st century AD, which can serve as one of the proofs of the correctness of the scientist's hypothesis. The house is located under the Monastery of the Sisters of Nazareth, which is across the street from the Church of Annunciation in Nazareth. The researcher believes that the builder of the house was probably Joseph, the father of Jesus. It is well known that Joseph was a carpenter, but in the New Testament, he is also referred to as a tecton, an artisan who could build a house. The dwelling was probably a house with living and storage areas next to a courtyard and a roof terrace. Whoever built this house was very well versed in stone processing. The Monastery of the Sisters of Nazareth is located in the center of modern Nazareth, in the immediate vicinity of the famous Church of the Annunciation, which has existed for many centuries. Initially, the Church of the Annunciation was built on the site where, according to legend, an angel told Mary that she would give birth to Jesus, and it was built at about the same time as the Church of the 5th century, erected on the remains of a house. This suggests that the 5th century church above the house of Jesus was considered no less important. In addition, the house exactly matches the description made by the Byzantines in ancient times, in 670 AD. Mount of the Scythian leader from the southern Urals in the Rostov region, archaeologists of the Southern Scientific Center of the Russian Academy of Sciences and DSTU discovered a mysterious Scythian burial of the 4th century BC. However, instead of a resident of the Donsteps, the leader of nomadic tribes from the southern Urals was buried in it. The burial mound complex, 3 meters high and 50 meters in diameter, explored in the interflue of the Don and Kagalnik rivers, has been known to scientists since 1976. However, it was possible to start full-scale excavations only in September of this year. Scanning the mound with geophysical instruments showed the presence of a large number of burials of the rice period. In the field of the mound, a treasure of bronze items and a polished stone axe of the Sumerian time were discovered. At a depth of 5.5 meters, archaeologists were expected to find the main find, the central burial of the leader of the Scythian era. Alas, it was plundered in ancient times, and scientists found only a skull and five amphorae, but the accompanying burials, in which the leader's bodyguard and horse were kept, survived. The warrior, a man about 2 meters high, was killed during a burial ceremony. A gold chain was found on his remains, and next to him lay a set of weapon, a sling, a quiver with arrows, two spears, dart pines, and an iron sword with a hilt wrapped in gold foil. Despite the fact that the blade of the sword is poorly preserved, archaeologists managed to establish that the weapon is typical for the nomads of the southern Urals. There was also a Greek vessel for incense or oil, Lesseth. The burial of a horse, an animal sacred to the Scythians, was located higher. The horse's head was adorned with a cast deer-shaped nose piece. The world's oldest tattoo needles People have been tattooing their bodies for thousands of years. 
But recently, archaeologists have found that ancient people began to make tattoos much earlier than previously thought. Tennessee archaeologists have discovered the oldest tattoo toolkit in the world, ranging in age from 5,520 to 3,620 years. Researchers found the tattoo kit in 1985 during the construction of a bridge near Nashville, Tennessee. At the same time, scientists defined it simply as a toolbox. It has been in storage for several decades. This one of those situations where an artifact ends up in a collection, but nothing is done with it. Tito Wolf took an interest in the toolbox because he mistook it for an Indian drug set. But after they teamed up with zooarchaeologist Tanya Perez of Florida State University, scientists realized they had something else in their hands – ancient tattoo needles. The set contained turkey bone needles, pigment-filled shell halves, and stone tools. The signs of wear, discovered by another archaeologist, Christian Gates St. Pierre, helped to understand the true purpose of the needles. He and Perez also found traces of red and black pigment on the tips of the bones. They believe that the bones were used as needles for tattoos and the dyed shells were used as ink pots. Based on radiocarbon dating, Dieter Wolf and Perez also determined their age. This suggests that ancient people in North America used tattoos more than 1,000 years earlier than previously thought. Because tattoos leave marks on human skin and human skin degrades over time, it is difficult for scientists to understand the scope and significance of tattoos in ancient cultures. Myth about the life of a primitive man Naturally, Neanderthals were depicted naked, sometimes in loincloth, and Cro-Magnons dressed in clothes close to modern ones. But in fact, the Neanderthals had the best clothes, not the Cro-Magnons. It is absolutely certain that the modern man got the body lice from the Neanderthals. The lice genetics dispersed about 70,000 years ago. At that time, only Neanderthals lived in cold climates. Apparently, Cro-Magnons got lice because of two close cooperations of Cro-Magnons and Neanderthals. Cro-Magnons were very different. They were more Cro-Magnon species than the number of modern races in Homo sapiens. The phrase caveman is essentially meaningless at all. There are too few caves on us and even fewer habitable ones. It's just that the cave sites have better preserved the remains of people who lived earlier. Ancient people were very mobile. They had to be constantly on the move. Every day the parking lots of people moved 5-15 kilometers due to the fact that food ran out rather quickly, if we are talking about northern Eurasia. Ancient people practically did not practice medicine in our usual sense, but dentistry was very developed. There is evidence that they made fillings from beeswax and also used plants as medicines. There were no mass epidemics. If a fatal disease did arise, it would mow down the entire camp. Mass epidemics began to appear only during the Neolithic. Congenital abnormalities were very common due to the large number of closely related marriages. Ancient people were sick very often and the average lifespan was 30-35 years. Rarely did people live to be 50 years old. For people of Heidelberg, the highest age was considered to be 35 years and the average life expectancy ranged from 16 to 21 years. Nisaurus, over which scientists are wrecking their brains. Pterosaurs are a real headache for the scientific community. Scientists do not quite understand how they flew, whether they were warm-blooded, and where they came from at all. But Nisaurus is a separate topic. It is like a Rubik's Cube inside another Rubik's Cube. It's even scary to approach it. Only dimensions are reliably known about him. With a body length of 40 centimeters, the boy did not even reach 2 kilograms of mass, but he grabbed the wings for himself. 2 meters of bones, skin, and tendons turned the flying reptile into a mini hand glider. The first difficulties begin with the wings. Pterosaurs walk on the ground, resting their front legs on several toes. Only the Nosaurus have only one finger, and it bears the entire weight of the wing, so trampling on the planet turned into sheer torment. So the scientist reasoned he did not walk on the ground. Our hero either soared in the skies like a swift, or was a duck of the Cretaceous period and flopped in the water 24-7. And the reptile also carried real horns on its head. The frightening 
the size of the crest of two processes 42 and 32 centimeters long has no analogs both among extinct creatures and among existing ones. Men again had to take up theories. The first of them says that a titanic-sized sail was attached to the crest, which worked like a tail in modern aircraft, giving the flyer an unattainable stability in flight. The followers of the second theory strongly disagree with the above. They say that there are no traces of tissue attachment, and small individuals do not even have the crest itself. In the opinion of these scientists, the frontal horn served only one purpose, to show that the belly is already old enough and you can do this with it. The situation is further complicated by the lifetime of the fossil puzzle. Only 500,000 years, 84 and a half million years ago, these mysterious creatures disappeared as suddenly as they appeared. The scientific community has been trying to guess their secrets for 150 years, but every year the number of questions only grows. The mystery of the silver hands. The famous Italian city park Walci, to the north of Rome, keeps its ancient secrets, but at the same time allows time travel to reach the Etruscans, one of the most mysterious civilizations in Europe. In the park, one of the most important centers of ancient Etraria in central Italy, there is an Etruscan and Roman city, as well as a Walci necropolis in Osteria. During recent excavations, an Etruscan tomb has been discovered, dating from the late 7th century BC. It is believed that the tomb belonged to a woman. The grave goods buried together with the body are intact. Archaeologists have also found an Egyptian scarab at this site. The scarab depicts the Egyptian god Horus with the head of a falcon and is believed to date from 746 BC until 525 BC. One unusual discovery by archaeologists was made when scientists stumbled upon the most breathtaking site, namely the Tomb of the Silver Hands, a monumental site with a long atrium corridor open to the sky, leading to three burial chambers at contained the remains of at least three people. This tomb was supposed to belong to high-ranking members of Etruscan society, regardless of their gender. Rare and fragile silver hands gave the name to the tomb, made of foil from an alloy of silver and copper, embossed with light gold leaf applied to the nails of three fingers. Next to the hands on the ground, archaeologists have also found several purple threads that they believe were used to tie gold rivets to the colorful clothing that once wore the mannequin. The oldest meteorite from the Sahara Experts have studied the EC002 meteorite, discovered last year in the Sahara Desert. This stone weighs about 32 kilograms and is estimated to be 4.6 billion years old. It has been identified as a piece of protoplanet that formed before Earth. Achondrites are a fairly common type of meteorite, accounting for about 8% of all found. These are stone meteorites without rounded inclusions, chondrules. They are similar in composition and structure to terrestrial basalts. All echondrites, to one degree or another, underwent melting, which destroyed the chondrules. A team of scientists determined that this 32kg piece of rock was once liquid lava, then cooled and solidified for 100,000 years and eventually came to our planet. Until now, no asteroids with similar properties have been found. It is likely that the protoplanet from which it originated has since disappeared, becoming part of larger bodies or just collapsing. EC002 is composed primarily of volcanic rocks rich in sodium, iron and magnesium. The mystery of the book had from the sunken sheep the strange object resembling a head of cabbage lifted from the board of the Archangel Raffle in 2020 is nothing more than a book. The most valuable find is an impressive volume that has survived almost completely, but it has yet to be determined what kind of publication it is. The pages heavily contaminated with lard, grease and tar, swollen from seawater, have not yet given up their secrets. The book has survived in its entirety, there are more than 1000 pages in it. The paper fibers have swollen, the book is fully open because of this. It of course will require a very careful and thoughtful approach to restoration. The book has a leather cover, under the cover there is a baking, most likely made of wood veneer. All this will have to somehow be dried separately, disassembled and separately dealt with the book block. The book will certainly be readable. Weapon in Barrels 
In 1974, at the bottom of the Dordogne River, near the Gascon town of Castellan, black diggers discovered a medieval sword. This find was in general quite ordinary. Swords are found in rivers with enviable regularity. However, the further development of events shocked not only archaeologists, people accustomed to discovering various kinds of artifacts, but also weapon experts. Literally dozens of swords of the 15th century, which were also perfectly preserved, began to be offered at various auctions. Despite the fact that the black diggers kept the place of the find a secret, the gold mine was still localized, and then the specialists also pulled themselves up to the swords. The dating of the swords and the place of their discovery made it possible to quite accurately tie them to the event as a result of which the weapon ended up at the bottom of the river. This event was the battle between the French army under the command of Jean Barreau and the English army under the command of John Talbot, which took place on July 17. 1453, near this very Castellan. All found swords, one-handed, one-and-a-half-handed, and two-handed, were basically divided into three groups, according to their classification. Many swords had marks of damage on the blades and hilts, in the form of notches, and some also had marks of reaper of all damage. Some, judging by the uneven corrosion of the blades, were sheath. In total, black diggers discovered about 80 swords, a unique number of long-bladed weapons, at one time and in one place. All of them, as we managed to find out, were in two barrels on board the barge which, for unknown reasons, sank in the river. Most of them were sold at auctions, both to the museum collections and to private hands. The price for them started from 20,000 euros and went up to 40,000 and more. So, for example, a two-handed sword with a total length of 135 and a half centimeters at an initial price of 25,000 euros was bought for 66,000. Giant Scarab and Animal Mummies Archaeologists discovered this treasure last year near the Steppe Pyramid of Saqqara, south of the country's capital. Among the hundreds of artifacts, there are masks, statues and mummified cats, crocodiles, cobras and birds. One Egyptian official also touted a large scarab statue as at a press conference as one of the most significant discoveries. According to him, the scarab is the most beautiful discovery of these hundreds because it is the largest scarab in the world. Saqqara is an ancient burial site that served as an acropolis for Memphis, the capital of ancient Egypt for over two millennia. Located about 30 kilometers south of Cairo, Saqqara has been a burial site for more than 3,000 years and has been declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Recently, Egypt has stepped up the promotion of its archaeological finds in an effort to revive its vital but failing tourism industry. And in order not to miss a new video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell. In the next video, even more amazing and unusual finds are available for you. Thanks for your views. Bye everyone!